As much as I like NeoVim, I'll admit, it can be difficult to know how to set up and configure a productive environment for writing code. So, on this video, I'm going to share some plugins and configuration to supercharge NeoVim for working with Rust. By the end of this video, you'll have native auto code completion, automatic code formatting whenever you save, built in debugging, and a powerful tool for managing versions of your cargo crates. For this video, I'm using NVChad as my base configuration. This means that all of the configuration code will be written in Lua and the project structure will be tailored to NVChad. If you're using another NeoVim configuration, such as Astro, you should be able to achieve the same thing with a little bit of translation. If you're working from a base implementation, however, I'd recommend using NVChad. Fortunately, I already have a video on getting set up with NVChad, which you can go and watch now if you want. To get started, make sure you're using the latest version of NeoVim, which, as of the time of recording, is version 9.0. I'm using Arch, by the way, so I'll install it using Pacman. You can check the running version of NeoVim using the nvim dash dash version command. To make this video easier to follow, I'm going to start with the base installation of nvchad. To do so is as easy as cloning the nvchad repo into our NeoVim configuration directory. Now let's open NeoVim and make sure to enter n for no when it asks you if you want to install the example config. You then should see the default plugins being installed. After it's done installing the base packages, I'm also going to set the theme to Capuchin, because I'm addicted to those pastel colours. Now that we have our base configuration set up, the first thing we're going to want to do is to configure an LSP server to use with Rust. This will provide contextual aware code completion and other tooling. The recommended Rust LSP server is Rust Analyzer. Let's go ahead and install it. We can install this using RustUp if we want to, which is typically my preferred approach. However, for this video, we're going to install it within NeoVim using Mason. To do so, navigate over to your freshly downloaded NeoVim configuration and open it up in Vim. You can open up the file tree by pressing Ctrl and N. Now let's open up the chatrc.lua file in our custom directory. If you don't have one, create this yourself and open it up in Vim. In here, we'll import our custom plugins file, which we'll create in this directory using the name plugins.lua. Next up, we can open up this new file and return an empty Lua map inside, which we'll use for adding our plugin information. Inside of this map, we'll add in Mason again, which will extend the default configuration. Then we'll add the ensure installed option for Mason to add Rust Analyzer to our configuration. Now let's close and reopen NeoVim and then call the Mason install all command. A window will pop up showing Rust Analyzer being installed. Next up, we want to change our LSP config so that we load and run Rust Analyzer. Heading back over to our custom plugins.lua file, let's add in an override for the LSP config so that we can load our custom LSP server. What we're doing here is specifying the package name that we're overriding, which is the NeoVim LSP config package, and adding in a new configuration function, which will load the default nvchad config and our own custom LSP config. Next, let's create a configs directory in our custom folder and add in a file called lspconfig.lua. In this file, we're going to set up Rust Analyzer to work with NeoVim. We'll first need to import the onAttach and capabilities values from the nvchad lspconfig to use with our LSP servers. Then we'll need to import the NeoVim lspconfig. I also like to pull in the lspconfig utilities package as well. Now we can add Rust Analyzer to the lspconfig table. And using the setup function, let's assign the onAttach and capabilities values. We can also constrain this LSP to only run on Rust file types and to set the project root for any cargo projects to be where the cargo.toml lives. Additionally, I like to set the cargo.all features value to true in the configuration, as this can help with autocomplete on cargo crates. Now, if I open a project that has the RAND crate added, we can see autocomplete works as expected once I type in the module name. One feature I really find helps to speed up my Rust development is to enable code formatting whenever I save my file. This feature is provided by the official Rust Vim plugin. To add this plugin, let's jump back into our custom plugins Lua file and add it to our plugins table. We'll also set this to load on file type of Rust. As well as specifying the plugin's name, we should add an init function to the plugin configuration to run Lua code when the package is loaded. Here's the line to enable Rust auto formatting on save. If we jump over to another project, here we can see some code that is poorly formatted. Now when I save the file, the code is reorganized as per Rust format. 
as well as code completion and auto formatting, any decent IDE also provides the ability to debug code from within the text editor. We can achieve this in Rust and NeoVim using another plugin. The first thing we need to do is jump over to our custom LSP config and delete our Rust analyzer entry. Yeah, sorry about that. But if we have both configured, then it'll just end up causing conflicts. Now let's jump on over to our custom plugins file and add in the Rust Tools plugin. Just like the others, we'll set the file type for this to be Rust. The Rust Tools plugin provides a lot of available features for working with Rust, so I recommend reading the documentation for what else you can achieve with this plugin. However, for this video, we're just going to focus on debugging. Back in our plugins Lua file, we're also going to want to set up some custom options, so let's go ahead and add in a function to our ops value for the plugin table. In this function, we're going to return an import of some custom options we're about to create. Let's create a new file in our custom configs directory for Rust tools. In this file, we're going to set up any custom options for the Rust tools package, especially the LSP server, which is just Rust analyzer under the hood. Let's go ahead and import the familiar on attached and capabilities values and add them to the server block of our options table. Jumping back over to our custom plugins files, let's go ahead and add a config function to the Rust tools table, where we just call the setup function with the newly provided options. Whilst setting this up, I kept running into an issue where the default LSP config wasn't loaded before the Rust tools package was. To fix this, we can add a dependency of LSP config to our Rust tools plugin entry, which will force the package manager to load Rust tools after LSP config has been loaded. Now, if we open up a Rust file, we should see LSP is working as it was before, and with some more features compared to our previous setup. In order for debugging to be enabled, we need to install another NeoVim plugin called the NeoVim Debug Adapter Protocol. Let's add this to our custom plugins table and then reinstall our packages. Finally, all we need to do is install the LLDB package on our system in order to debug our code. I'll install this using Pacman because, well, you know why. After everything's installed, we can go ahead and debug our code. To debug code, first open up a file you want to test. Then we'll call the Rust Debuggables command, which will present a menu for our build and run options. Let's choose to run our test target. And nothing happens. This is because we haven't set up any breakpoints, so the code is just running and exiting. Let's go ahead and add a breakpoint to a line of code we wish to inspect with our debugger. Selecting the line we care about, we can add a breakpoint using the dap toggle breakpoint command. You can see a breakpoint has been added, denoted by the capital B next to the line number. If we rerun our debug command, you'll see we've actually arrived at our breakpoint, which is noted by the arrow at the line. Although this doesn't tell us too much about what is going on. In order to inspect our values, we can use some of the UI features of nvindap to view what our current variables look like according to the scope. Entering the following command will open up a sidebar that we can view our locally scoped window with. We can then step through our code using the dap step over command, which will allow us to inspect changes to our variables as our code progresses line by line. And with that, we have some rudimentary debugging in Rust. Although this is a little bit cumbersome to type in any time we want to inspect our local variables. To make the debugging experience better, we'll go ahead and add some key mappings to open up our windows and add breakpoints. Heading back on over to our custom config, let's add a new file called mappings.lua. Here we can add in new mappings to simplify our debugging experience. Let's add in a mapping for toggling a breakpoint using space D and B. With this added, let's import it into our chad.rc file. Now jumping back on over to our code, we can easily toggle breakpoints using this key binding. Let's go ahead and add the same for our ur sidebar command so we can easily open this up as well. We'll bind this to the space D U S command, and we'll add a function which calls the same Lua code we were using earlier. Back in the code we're debugging, we can now press this key bindings to easily open up a sidebar to inspect the values of variables in our debugging scope. There's many more UI options in NVDAP that you can use, and I'd recommend reading the documentation to see what works for you. Alternatively, if you'd like me to do a more detailed video on NVDAP, then let me know. This next plugin adds greater information and utilities for working with crates via the cargo.toml. With this plugin, we're able to see crate versions, update or upgrade crates to the latest version, get autocomplete for crate versions, and jump to the documentation for a crate with a single command.
to install this plugin, first jump on over to the plugins.lua file and add in the crates plugin entry. Let's set it to lazy load on Rust and Toml files. Now we're going to want to override some configuration. Let's create a config function, require the package and call the setup function. I was having issues getting crate to work when opening up the cargo.toml first, so I added in a call to the crates.show function to resolve it. To get autocomplete to work, you'll need to override the default sources for the comp package. We can do this easily with another plugin entry and adding a function for the options, where we load the default values and add crates to the plugin's sources. Now we have a superpowered cargo.toml which will give us autocomplete for crate versions and a bunch of other utilities. If we jump over to our mappings file, we can add a mapping to automatically upgrade our crates and bind it to the space RCU key. With this setup, you can turn NeoVim into a powerhouse for writing Rust code. I hope this video helps you to have a better Rust developer experience and inspired you to try configuring NeoVim for yourself. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.